Welcome everyone to the self-love conversation. I am going to have a lovely conversation with Medina Lee Barkin. She is running self-love classes, she's got self-love courses on her website and she has been doing this for about 23 years. She is a soulful artist, she is a soulful singer, creator, writer. She is the author of seven books and she has produced all different bits of creativity, drawing, art, illustrations, all juicy, juicy, beautiful stuff. She is living in Victoria, that's where she's based. And she is running classes, small group classes from her wellness center. And her wellness center is just growing exponentially with these beautiful classes that she's running on self-love, self-care, what that means, how that looks, all of that. So it is an absolutely an honor to talk to her about all of this. She is a holistic life coach. She also has qualifications in psychology and other areas. She works with families, she works with children, and she works with adults and people. She has also got a wonderful group called Community Soul Connect, where people uh, contribute, add to um, soulful things, uh, reflective things in that beautiful group. So we are just waiting for her to jump on and when she jumps on, I will add her to the Facebook discussion. I hope everyone is having a memorable day on this Anzac Day and that uh, peace and freedom is also uh, attributed to your way as well. Consequently, that is why I'm wearing the red poppy today to, to commemorate that particular day. Okay. So we're just waiting a few more minutes for Medina to jump on so then we can have a lovely conversation about uh, how that is for her and us. Uh, I met Medina <laughs> a long time ago, probably about 15 years ago when I used to live in Victoria and she was doing it back then and she was doing these wonderful uh, group sessions for children for families. So she is well and truly established in this practice. I will now invite the lovely Medina on with me. Here we go. And add. Hi darling. Hi. Hey. <laughs> Hi. Hello, Lovely Medina. to join you. Hi, nice how are you darling? You. <laughs> Lovely to see you. Nice to see you too. And I've just, I don't know if you heard that lovely blurb I was just telling the audience about how long we've been friends and all of that and what you're doing in your wellness center and all your beautiful creative songs. So please tell us more about you. <laughs> Oh, that's lovely. Thank you. I missed a little bit of that. I just sort of came on the end, but um, thank you so much. I really appreciate it. And you're looking stunning in all your beautiful red as well. You're looking very, yes. that's for Anzac Day, isn't it? It is. But... That is definitely for Anzac. And I noticed way down there, you've got a big pink love heart. I sure have. How appropriate is that? <laughs> Absolutely. Self-love all the way. That's right, that's right. <laughs> and pink, the heart chakra colour. <laughs> Beautiful. Yeah, yeah. Oh, well, thank you. Um, my um, real mission in life is to help uh, raise um, consciousness um, and to um, help not only help others but myself as well, you know, to, to, to be at our highest potential and to be able to, um, utilize a whole range of different holistic skills and tools to be able to 
bring our uh, highest mission into the world, to be able to uh, resonate at our highest frequency, to be able to express our essence in the world in the way that we came here authentically to do. You know, the really important thing, I think, that a reason why we're here is to bring our energy into the world and give it to the world in our own unique way. And part of that is self-love. So in order to be able to do that, you need to be able to have self-love and to be able to express um, both through self uh, uh, for self and for others, um, this wonderful quality of self-love that is um, a connection to the divine, a connection to something higher than ourselves. And that's how we tap into that self-love. Um, uh, in terms of what I've done, um, I also, as well as this service in terms of my mission of working with people and helping yes. them to be their best, I'm also very much into creativity. So I love to write songs and record them. I love to, I've just got into paintings recently because um, I've been painting on and off for years, but I had someone come in and buy a few of my paintings and I just, it was like a Pandora's box. <laughs> I just started <laughs> painting madly and I've just done seven paintings this week, which will go in my centre, which is the space I'm in at the minute, Freedom Light Collective. So that's can <laughs> Sorry? I interrupt you? Do you have any there to show us? Ah, uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't put them in there, but I, I can I can share them. I'll share one um, after in, in in the stream. But um, they're very cheery and bright and lots of colour. So um, and I, I also encode them with my light frequency. So it's oh, it is um, uh, activating things within people as well, and. Um, also, I love to write, so I've written lots of books and they're on my website as well. And um, yeah, writing poetry, songs, books. Um, and I think they're my main areas of creativity at this point, but I, I'd like to get more into, uh, I've done some spiritual um, songs, but more chanting type music mm. in the future as well, which I really love. So, and, and I do like light language as well which is you can also incorporate that into music as well yeah yes beautiful, <laughs> beautiful and you actually I think you have a website for your music don't you I do like, uh yes yes, yes yes so there's there's a website for 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 my services and work which is medina.com um M-E-D-Y-H-N-E, -E, but there's the original music at sonicremedy.com and um, that's got a lot of stuff there. We've had, we've had, we're lucky to have a song in a movie in America and um, um, a, lot of, a lot of cool Sorry. things have happened with that. But um, you can only focus, I can't focus on too many things at once, <laughs> so I have to pick my thing <laughs> that I'm working with. And right at the minute, it's the, the working with people, the coaching and the healing online and in person and the, and the painting. So beautiful, yeah. <laughs> beautiful, beautiful. So tell us more about these self love classes and self love courses and any strategies for self love. Okay, beautiful. Well, I think you know, as as we've said earlier, you and me when we've been chatting, such an important area self love because we get taught so many things in life that are really externalizing who we are, you know, externalizing uh, the, the way that we live in the world, you know, going to a job, working in a job, earning money, all that, it's all external stuff to ourselves. But the really important thing, the essential thing for us to really work on, I think, in life is the internal work, going inward and seeing what we need to do um, to... Um, heal any wounding within to be able to transmute you know things that we've experienced in not only this life but many lifetimes that have held us back and also being able to um, go to a place where we can shine our highest light in the world and such an important time at the minute to be able to do that because there's so much transition happening there's some incredible ascension energy coming down on the planet high frequency vibration energy and uh people are feeling very destabilized 
uh, confused energetically. They're um, seeing um, a lot of the deep karmic wounding of the planet coming to the surface and they don't know how to deal with it. So now is a really, really important time to focus on self-love and self-care and that vibration and energy we then put out in the world makes an incredible difference. You know, even one simple thing that we can do in terms of strategies is, is all the forgiveness techniques, you know, that, that we can do for self-love, primarily starting with self, forgiveness of self, and then going to all the people in our life. And I have a technique in my class where we do this, where we go to all the people in our life that we haven't yet felt like we've forgiven. Yes. We have a sense of um, something which is not at peace or there's like a tension um, or a stress when you think about that person. And then you go through, um, there's a whole range of different forgiveness techniques. A really good one is that Haiponopono technique, yes. which is the Hawaiian technique, you know. Beautiful. I forgive you, please forgive me, I love you, thank you. And just thank you. saying that with the person or visualising the person in front of you mm. and going into your heart centre and really um, directing uh, genuine love and forgiveness towards that person. And to go through every single person in your life is is going to empower you astronomically in terms of your self-love, self-worth, as well as having an impact energetically. Every single person that you forgive has an incredible ripple effect which goes out into the world and is felt by everyone on some level. So imagine all the people that you're forgiving in your life and going through. And it could oh. be someone that just, you know, from primary school that bumped into you on their bike or you know, something really random, but you're still holding an energy there for that. So, yes. um, so important, all, all those types of techniques. Well, what are your favourite so, forgiveness techniques, yeah. darling? Yeah, I was just going to go on with that forgiveness. And it's also forgiveness of self. Because totally. many times, yes, we, we struggle with the forgiveness of ourselves and not listening to our intuition or not having, feeling compromised in our boundaries or compromised in our actions when we yes. feel like it's discordant to who we are. So absolutely, you know, forgiveness of you know, people, but forgiveness and love back to ourselves as well. That's the number one. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. um, you know, even things like, you know, you married someone when you were younger and it didn't quite work out. There, there, there is, you know, in some, in some ways, there's no such thing as failure. There's, there's a thing where we are all on a path of learning and everything is part of that experience. And so there is no failure in that sense. And, and, and I think regret tends to be something which is dis, Destructive in a sense. It's it's not really yes. supporting. So to have regrets isn't really what you ideally want to do. But just to have a, a perspective where everything has happened to make you who you are now, and to to be able to um, heal you and get you to a place where you are able to, um, you know, uh, release a lot of the old uh, yeah. chains that have been binding us, and and that's. that's it's important lifetime this time to, to release and clear many, many lifetimes, not just this mm -hmm. lifetime. Mm. Absolutely. At the, the work that, the inner work that is done now has majestic ripple effects. <laughs> you know, it ripples beyond, beyond, beyond. And I, I, it, it, it's an understatement to how powerful this work can actually be, you know, that I forgiveness know. and self-love. And Absolutely. the forgiveness, because many times we have that really deep energy of shame or guilt that can mm. really ripple through and being mm. able to forgive and release is so, so powerful, healing and self-love, you know? So important to do in this lifetime, you know. Uh, then you, you never have to go backwards. You always take that learning with you into your continuing yeah. lifetimes which just means you don't have to do it then it's better to do it now while we can it's a great opportunity yeah. and um the, the part of i think that forgiveness that's happening planetarily at the moment is forgiveness of the divine feminine within you know we've been living yeah. under a patriarchy for a long time 
and it's a very strong predominant masculine energy but now we're healing the divine feminine energy within and collectively and it's coming up in all sorts of ways i know i'm healing it with my ancestral line with my mother and yes. um you know my my girls and i know that um the divine feminine is really really coming up strongly in everyone now to, to be really embraced and loved back into fullness. And um, that, that is very much part of self-love and, and, and love for our connection to the divine. Mm. And it was missing for a long time on the planet while we went through all this patriarchy. But an interesting point to note is that uh, the Cathedral of Notre Dame was actually an architectural expression, a global architectural expression of honouring the divine feminine. And the name Notre Dame means Our Lady. And so actually what happened, I feel, with the, with the um, fire that just happened recently was it was um, the fire occurred to transmute the old um, energies, the old paradigms that no longer serve us in order for it to be restored, to bring in the new divine feminine energy. So it was uh, ultimately a very positive thing. And it is also um, a very important world symbol of the divine feminine, which is all the things I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. So, so true. And and some, it, as we say, there's no coincidences, are there? No, you know? no, absolutely. <laughs> No accidents. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Not at all. And, and at Easter yeah. too, it's such a strong energy of love, you know, Good Friday and everything like that. The timing was really significant. Mm. Yeah. Totally. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. So not only on a, a world or energetic level, but also for us internally as well. Yeah. Definitely. Definitely. And, we, and so many of us are really feeling those shifts within you know, as we go through this process. Uh, and to maintain a frequency of um, gratitude is, is a wonderful thing and grace, you know, forgiveness is about grace. They're really two high frequencies that we can hold, which which will help serve us with self-love, love of others, and, and to really help the planet at this time. Um, yeah. The strategies you mentioned earlier about, um, you know, working with self-love, uh, I was wondering if you'd like, to share a strategy what do you think is another really good self-love strategy tosca yeah i hear like with self-love i definitely hear you know all that self-nurturance you know the the mm -hmm. you know warm baths sunset walks all of this beautiful nurturing stuff and absolutely it is self-love <laughs> like this but it's external i guess it is external it's, and i yes. i think well, I think, I know that the soft love also comes in with saying no to things and honouring your energetic space on that day, in that moment, because it is that connection with yourself <laughs> that really helps to give love back. And by saying, sorry, no, I can't do that today, or no, that doesn't feel right for me, is also self-love. So important. That's a brilliant point. And, and, you know, as females, often people feel like they have an obligation to serve others True. and to nurture others and, you know, and to be able to listen to that inner, inner voice, that inner intuition, which is speaking loudly to us, but we often drown it out and we don't listen to it. And, 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 and every day can be different. Like one day what might be perfect for you to help someone, <laughs> yes. for example, might be not good on another day when you're, when you're feeling more flat. I like to liken it to having an inner cup and, and tuning into your inner cup. Is your inner cup full? Is it half full? Is it empty? If it's, if it's um, you know, half full or, or nearly empty, then I don't think it's a great idea to go and be serving and helping others when you're not in a really rejuvenated space because you'll just get um, tired or drained or empty and then you have nothing to give it all and, yeah. and 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 i think that was the lesson of the christ consciousness energy too which is um to to be really loving of self i think was a really strong message in that christ consciousness energy and to be really well i have three main components in my self-love self-care classes that talk about self-love in a, in a really good way that helps you understand so there are three components and they are self care 
self-compassion, and self-clarity. Mm, self-care. Powerful. Yes. Self-care care is the ability to be able to um, include in your life activities um, where you are able to look after self. And something like at least 20% of your time, at least at minimum, should be put toward you know self-care. So that's things like um, you know, exercising, uh, making great meals for yourself, sp- spending uh, your time in ways that really honour and uh, fill your cup. So, you know, you might love talking to girlfriends or you might <laughs> love going for a walk in nature. So all those things, you know, make sure that you prioritise them into your life. So that's the self-care aspect. Uh, enough sleep's a good one as well. And then you've got, (laughs) (laughs) yeah, really important at the minute because we're integrating so much. Um, And then you've got self-compassion. Self-compassion is the ability to really be kind to yourself and have compassion toward yourself at all times. You know, we often all have an inner critic which is self-critical or judgmental of self that comes up at times. But to really be aware and to work with that and to really minimise that as much as we can and to to be able to have an inner voice which is our own best cheerleader, our own best uh, friend. Uh, and the energy, you know, just feeling in your heart that energy of love towards self. And that, that can also be expressed as love towards your physical body. You know, how much do you love your physical body regardless of, what our culture says about how we should look, you know, what size we should be and, you know, blah, blah, blah. (laughs) Blah, blah, blah. Um, (laughs) That, that, that relationship we have with our body where we say to our body, I love you, my body. You're so beautiful. You're so special to me. You're my best friend. You have honored and supported me so much in this life through everything. And you're only there to give us messages, you know, so when something happens in our body, that's giving us a message that we need to uh, change something in our life. Our body's there telling us as our best friend, trying to get the message across and, you know, just to love, love your body, touch your body and say, I love you so much. Thank you for everything you do for me. And just feel that sense of gratitude and love, uh, you know, that that's so important, especially as women who are very much stereotyped into looking certain ways and, 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 uh, which can really work against us and disempower us in, on so many levels. Um, so that's self-compassion. And then you've got self-clarity. Self-clarity is the ability to be able to be clear about who you are, why you're here in the world. And in my classes, a really great way to be able to work out if you're on track with your self-clarity is to get four of your like good friends to write down maybe 10 qualities they think are very um, relevant to who you are, you know, so they can write down, you know, 10 things that they think perfectly express who you are as a person. And then you write your own 10 qualities and just see if there's a synchronisation and an alignment with those qualities. If there's a big discrepancy, uh, I would advise you to, to, to go into that self-clarity much more deeply and to look at why is there a difference between how people perceive me and how I perceive myself. And that self-clarity really propels us forward in terms of our purpose as well in our direction, helps us to go in the right direction. And it takes away a lot of stress too, you know, you know, oh, these are, my, these are the things I'm good at, these are the things I'm working on, you know, <laughs> I've got a handle on that awareness. I'm doing some amazing in my centre uh, astrology classes with, I've got this amazing astrology teacher here who does Beautiful. birth charts, if any, anyone wants to um, get one online. <laughs> and um, <laughs> he's amazing. And, you know, just even getting your birth chart done really clearly so that you know, these are the things I came in with and these are really accurately express who I am and and the the, the challenges I have, the things that I find easy, you know, maybe also help us to get more clarity on why we're here. And that can Mm. change through life as well as we change. Mm. Totally. And and we all go through different stages and seasons of our life. So things that are 
yes, important um, while we're younger or we're childbearing, change as we change, you know? So yes. it's being sensitive to the changes as well. Yeah, we can, that's the one thing we can rely on is change. Mm. <laughs> one thing. <laughs> yeah. Totally. And, totally. and um, so tell me, what, what other um, important strategies do you have, Tosca, for self-care as well? But I think it's a great topic because it really helps people to have something, you know, um, tangible to, to work with. Yeah, absolutely. A couple of things. I think when you are feeling congruent with who you are and energetically that is yeah. also self-love self-care it's when we feel that discordance mm. that we're not in alignment and we know it we know when we feel that funk we know that we're feeling grungy we know that we're feeling really tired that there's something not right and as you said to really tune in and attend and connect with the body that is that is where our clues also sit. Do you know what I mean? Like, oh, and you're so good at that because you're 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 a yoga teacher, and you can even stand on your head. <laughs> I had to get that in. <laughs> That's, That's amazing. Right. I was going to say hello to you with my feet up. <laughs> I'd like to see that. <laughs> Because your body changes every day. It changes yes. every hour. Before yes. What you've done before, depending who's around you, depending how you're being affected. Like, you, it's to come with a sense of change with what's happening with you in this moment, in this day, and being able to sit with that. Because as you said before, we come with an agenda. <laughs> I'm going to yes. do this. This is what I'm going to get done. Yes. This is how I'm going to be. Yes. And that's... Yes all good and well but if it doesn't feel right and your body's not right having the flexibility and adaptability to sort of either modify that change it rearrange it to see how you are feeling in that day you know or well, moment perfect. perfect so waking up in the morning and saying uh being in the flow and saying oh, how i feel today and another really good tip when you wake up in the morning i really recommend to everyone is to spend 10 minutes being in gratitude frequency for everything good in your life. It totally sets up the day. It really does. It totally makes does. a big um, So doing that practice is great. And then going in and saying, uh, yeah, what feels right for me today? And as you say, there are things in life that we have an obligation to attend to, but as much as we can to be in that flow and have days off where we're able to just be completely free and, and be able to do that. Mm -hmm. It's fantastic. I have, a, I have a whiteboard in my office and I have um, a list of all the things that bring me joy and, and raise my frequency. And, and then I look at that every day and I go, oh, I feel like doing that one today or I feel like doing that one. And I pick one to work with. And a really beautiful one I've got at the minute is um, I was guided about two months ago to get a pyramid to meditate in. And oh, so yes. I... Yes, I commissioned someone to, to make me a gold pyramid and I started sitting in that, oh my gosh, the energy is amazing. And I think the pyramid energy is really coming on the planet at the minute because when I actually started doing that, then I was reading stuff, people were posting about pyramids everywhere and it, it sets up a toroidal field energy. It's a very high frequency vibration within and it's so beautiful. So I've been really loving doing that. It's been like mm -hmm. seeing a best friend, you know, <laughs> sitting in that. And one time I was even um, sitting in it and I started to rock because of the, up, the download of energy coming through. And it was, I guess it was maybe clearing blockages or downloading energy. There was a few things going on. And it went for about 15 minutes. I was just rocking. It was amazing. And... Um, so if people want a pyramid, they're welcome to order one through me. We do make them and sell them around Australia. But um, that is something that's really resonated with me right at the minute because that pyramid energy really feels like it's in resonance with the energies coming through on the planet. Yeah. And, yeah. And, um, and then I've got some other beautiful things, painting. Like painting is so cool because you go into this like a zone where there's no time, it's timeless. When you go into that zone where it's just timelessness, you actually do not age. 
you literally do not age at, at a biochemical level. And I go into that timeless zone and I, paint, and I just don't think, no thoughts, nothing. And just in that painting and the mm. colour and it's fun. I love it. So that's a new thing I've rediscovered that I used to do that I'm going um, bananas for at the minute. <laughs> what's something that you, what's something that you yeah. really love? <laughs> I, I'm the same. When I get down to my paints or my crayons and I start to draw, I'm the same. I just flow. It's surrender. There is no judgment. It is just totally in that moment. And it is just, you know, you're just flowing. And it is just priceless. It is so joyful, you know. Absolutely. That's... And I, I say to my girls, um, the thing that I most love to do on Mother's Day is I want both of us, all of us, to sit down and do some painting and drawing together. Oh, that's lovely. So yeah. It is beautiful. We do that on a Mother's Day so that we can just celebrate, put the music on, feel the flow and just go with it. And it is, it, I'm with you. You can have fun and you do go bananas, you know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's the thing, yeah. you know. Just raising our frequency as high as we can get it in whatever way that we can that's obviously constructive <laughs> to ourselves and others. And, um, you know, I think honouring honoring, um, our relationships. Relationships are such an important aspect of our own um, sense of well-being. You know, they say 80% of our sense of feeling good is our relationships. So yeah. um, putting love and... Um, honoring and attention into our important relationships and but also being willing to as we evolve and we grow to perhaps there will be some that are no longer in resonance and and be able to let them go with love and then move on and create new ones that are in alignment with our energy so that's important too um and i, I one of the biggest things at the moment on the planet i think as well is we're starting with a really new ascension energy in 2019 and and we as we go into the age of aquarius and leave behind the age of pisces and the energy is totally new and fresh and different so having preconceived belief systems and ways of being mm -hmm. that are attached to how the earth and the planet used to be does not serve us anymore to be able to actually start from a clean slate and and not expect that the way that we do things now in the world will have the same um, result as they used to have because the energy is different now. And I think that as lightworkers and healers and people that are working in service to the planet, helping the planet, we're getting more and more support from above. And the darkness is dissipating, believe it or not. You wouldn't think so if you looked, obviously, at the news and things like that because it's all coming to the surface to be able to be transmuted. But if you really um, could see from a higher perspective, all it's like all the gunk at the bottom of the fish pond is rising to the surface so that it can be cleared. Yes. And um, before we didn't even know it was there, it was hidden at the bottom. But now it's coming up. And that's why it looks like there's so much you know, yucky stuff happening, but it's actually a very um, positive thing and constructive thing because it's all coming up to be cleared in you know, all the pedophilia stuff, the, you know, uh, all, all that sort of um, in the enslavement stuff that's coming up, all the political corruption, all that sort of stuff. Mm -hmm. That has to be able to come up so the planet can um, collectively raise its frequency and it's all part of the process and sometimes things look really dark because of all that but you just have to hang in there and trust that it's all going to shift soon and the light's going to clear it all and then it won't be there and, and it'll be way better for everyone so I'd encourage everyone not to fall into a, mm. um, a mind space that things are getting worse yes absolutely and to Mm, be mindful of where you place your energies and attention. Absolutely. And if you, yes, yes. And I think, as you mentioned, you know, if we're looking at raising our vibration and we're meditating and we're doing gratitude and we're finding joy, then being mindful of preserving that energy and 
you know, a lot of the times when we sit on the news, <laughs> it is all negative. It is, you know, and I'm not saying to be yeah, ignorant, but... but not to take it on personally, just to no. allow it to be and to keep going with those lovely self-care practices and trust in, in the universe, you know? Yes, yes, very good. I mean, you can be aware of the things that are happening in the world, but you can also choose not to emotionally, energetically um, re re sort of resonate at that frequency and, and to yes. go into the energy of that and the, and the emotions of that. It's, it's sort of staying in a non-attachment, which doesn't mean we can't send love and forgiveness to everyone in, you know, when there's a, a natural disaster or something, we can send love and forgiveness, but be in non-attachment with that. And I think to all the conspiracy theories and everything, you know, you, I mean, a lot of them, you know, you can have an awareness of all that stuff, but don't be too focused on it. Don't give it too much attention because what you give yeah. attention to, you, you magnify. And if something starts to make you feel a bit yucky, like I was, um, yes. my partner showed me a video this morning and it was about um, raising, you know, the, the money, mm -hmm. um, frequency on the planet but it just felt a bit funny in my stomach and it felt a bit heavy and even though it had a positive intention it just didn't feel it didn't sit right you know my in my tummy in my intuition and so I felt like you know that that didn't resonate for me as something that's really raising frequency on the planet or raising my own personal frequency um being really mindful of that and, and also really mindful of people are having a lot of challenges at the minute and a lot of difficulties. And, you know, we want to be able to obviously support people and help people. But also, like you said earlier, having those boundaries where you can't be constantly out there serving and helping others no. and supporting others without it at some point starting to impact. So, you know, having those boundaries of, um, oh, I'm feeling really full and clear today and this person wants help, I can, I, I feel right to go and help them. And it's not being selfish either because I think the greatest gift that we can give others is to teach them through our own actions and our own self-modelling how to be in self-love. It's not going out and helping everyone else and then not doing it yourself. It's doing it first yes. yourself and then going and being able to support others to do that as well. Mm -hmm. Totally. Being congruent yeah. with what your, your medicine is, your medicine <laughs> that you're doing yourself, exactly. You're walking your talk. Yes, yes. yes. Um, and I've got some wonderful, a couple of wonderful principles I'd love to read to you on my, yes, my class. I do, sure. <laughs> I do 20 major principles of self-love. So a couple of really good ones. Ah, um, the one where you offer your perspective and opinions in order to participate fully and to be seen and to feed the field with your energy. So that is about putting your essence into the world in order to shift and um, help the world through your energy. And we can do that just by being present. But also, you know, when you're in a, in a situation where you're around people that perhaps don't fully resonate with you as a, as a light worker or a healer often we'll just shut down and we'll say nothing because we can feel the energy and we can feel that it's not really our energy so we don't and I know I've done this a lot in the past and so we don't contribute we just be quiet or something but really it's important for us to be able to express our truth in in that field you know obviously as long as it's safe but express our truth in that field because that will also shift the energy and it will be going in seeping in there somewhere with people and it will be raising consciousness and raising the planet so that's a really important one and um i did that recently with something and i was surprised how i got a really positive um result from it because i thought i might get a bit of negativity or whatever but it actually panned out really well so that was really good um another really good principle of self-love is and I, I have a self-love self-care course online that people can do if they're interested in yes. pursuing this further um, and it makes an enormous difference I've got some amazing testimonials but um, one is your fundamental foundational core sense of value 
does not change according to any perceived negative feedback received from others. So when somebody says to you, oh, you're just terrible, you did this, da, 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 you're able to sort of maintain a sense of centeredness and uh, non-attachment in it really affecting how you feel about yourself at a deep inner level. And this is really hard to do. You know, it takes a lot of skill and practice, I find. But it's a really important one. And it's interesting because you can also say the same about positive. You know, you, you get positive feedback, which is really wonderful, and we all love that. Yeah. But also, <laughs> if that sways and you go off balance because you've got all that wonderful, you sort of going, you can go into ego or whatever, yeah. you're still not... Um, it's still not really serving you fully so to be able to maintain that center regardless of that external uh, yes. output yes. input is really um, an important point as well in self-love. Mm. Absolutely, absolutely. Not to take on uh, people's either projections or transferals onto you. <laughs> yes, and actually, yes. And to actually maintain... Uh, I'm going to use that word again, congruence to who you are. Do you know what I mean? Not to Yeah, yeah, totally. On. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you for sharing that. And I, you know, appreciate or don't appreciate your opinion, but not you, you have a choice whether or not you take that on or not. You don't have to take it on if it doesn't feel that's, right. That's right. And there's a lot of that acting out at the minute because people are yeah. having, there's a lot of fear coming up. There's a lot of people having challenges yeah. with what's going on in the world and so they're really um, projecting it. And, and sometimes they'll project it on someone who's a light worker healer because they're holding a lot of light. And so they project, and I've had this a few times recently. So it said to me, Medina, put stronger boundaries up yourself, you know, have clearer boundaries with, with some people because um, I've had, it, had this happen a few times lately myself. And um, so... I think that that's something to be aware of. There's more stuff coming out and people just like, blah, <laughs> at the moment because they're not sure what to do with it, how to, how to, and it will just come up inappropriately um, in, in, on occasions, more than ever before, I find, at the minute. Are you finding that with people at the minute, Tosca? Uh, uh, <laughs> I don't know. Even collectively? I do, I yeah. do find that, and uh, people can actually really sort of say things unthinking or in a reaction mode or in an angry mode, and it's like they're talking from that space of hurt or that space of rejection. Do you know what I mean? Yes. It's like a, yes. it's coming yes. out, and yes. I think sometimes being able to acknowledge that to say oh you sound really angry or you know i uh, you sound like you're feeling this do you know what i mean not to to take it on the word value but to take it on with that emotional value to actually acknowledge that's how they're feeling do you know what i mean and yes if, if it is something that's triggered them you know what i mean mm. definitely definitely yes it, it's it's taking um lots of skills to be in the world at the moment and um if you've got that real foundation of self-love then mm. you're much better equipped to be able to deal <laughs> with everything Very that's true. happening you know um yeah interesting yeah. <laughs> let me ask you because i mm -hmm. also believe that self-love and we as you we both agree you know bringing up your vibration through gratitude and joy and you can use affirmations and chanting but a lot of well none of this you can do in a ritual like in a routine or ritual so setting up your day with that practice or setting up you know the intention for the day what practices do you use Okay, well, <laughs> thank you for asking. <laughs> I have lots. Uh, but one I really like is see my heart here. This is yes. um, very appropriate because what you can visualize, for example, when you start your day is holding a heart in your hands. And this heart is, is, is yourself and it's your day and just sending lots of um, qualities that you want to create for your day into that heart. Um, today I want to really love myself. I really want to focus on um, getting really fit, you know, exercise, or um, I'm going to focus on really being at peace within today. And so you put that into your heart 
and you put all these colors in they can put colors in so colors represent different things you know like for example so you need lots of energy to go through your day you can put the color red in from the base chakra to help you through the day or you can put in you can put in um all sorts of things just just to help you like for example there might be um um somebody is coming into your day that you're going to be seeing and you asked in your day to send that person you know lots of uh joy and love for their day who's coming in as well so there's a whole lot of different things you can do with that heart and then you give that you know that mindful um attention and then you can place that in your own heart and then and then start the day with that energy you know that's a really beautiful uh self-love mm. practice to do absolutely <laughs> How do you start your day? What's yes, a special I, practice for you? Yeah, yes, I start my day <laughs> with a few things. I definitely uh, start my day with some chanting and some meditation and a little yoga routine. And if there's time for knitting, which I try to do, a bit of journaling and art. So I definitely try and honour myself with those practices. Some days are not going to happen like that. <laughs> you know, some yes. days we keep life and, you know, animals and all the rest of it. Sometimes it doesn't happen like that. But my intention every day is to come into the day with joy, with gratitude. You know, if I can't get to that, definitely gratitude to bring it in, as you were just beautifully saying, in your heart and radiating it out into your world. And as soon as you feel, you know, you're stepping out of your heart and into these in a critic, sabotage, you know, all these head talk, ah, coming back into my heart. <laughs> come back, yes. Baby, come back and, and rest Absolutely. in that beautiful heart space of gratitude. Yeah. That's great. That's wonderful advice. Yeah. And I think that the um, in, in, it's really good to remember that we have a shadow aspect. So we have a darker, everyone has a darker shadow aspect. We and we to do. be able to embrace, embrace that as well as, as the whole part of who we are and to send that, you know, forgiveness, that part of self, that love self. You know, if we have a day where we're just like blah and we're, <laughs> we're not feeling good and we're not being our shiny, joyful self, that's fine too. You know, just, you know, honour that space as well. Oh. And it's like, you know, emotion is energy in motion. It will move through. Yes. It will shift by, by going in and really feeling that space and not suppressing it or avoiding it or escaping it. We usually, in, in our society, in our culture, we escape it by being busy. I'm doing this, I'm doing that, da, da, da. I haven't got time to feel all this stuff. So if we, if we allow ourselves to truly go in and feel that, then we can allow ourselves to also move through it and shift it out. And, yes. you know, depression can be when we just continually squash all those negative feelings down, 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 down into our stomach and they get so congested down there that we get to a state of, you know, really um, deep negativity and, and sort of like a darkness. Um, mm. So really honouring all aspects of self and we don't have to be perfect. You know, we, we're no, doing we the don't. best we can. We're living in a dense reality. It's not the earth plane, they say, is one of the densest realms to, to be existing in. And we chose to be here. So the fact that we chose to be here, we're inherently masters to be able to come in and deal with this energy and be here at yes. this time through this very important transition. So we are all masters that are here at this time and yes. to honour ourselves for that, that's really important. Absolutely, absolutely. And I think to give ourselves the, the, oh, the acknowledgement that we are, we are masters and we make choices and we are born to be glorious and radiant. <laughs> And that is not in the way of denying that shadow side or our fear side or any of those aspects of ourselves. And I, I agree with you, Medina. I think when we start to suppress and we start to disconnect from yes. what's happening around us, that then it, it goes into very murky, muddy, numbing, dumbing, heavy feelings. And yes. when we acknowledge whatever we're feeling if it's fear anger sad whatever acknowledging that connecting with that <laughs> and yes. then if possible keeping company with that with love or loving kindness or compassion as you mentioned before and expressing it so if it needs to come out in writing if it needs to come out in painting if it needs to come out exactly. in a fast hard run or if it needs 
or punching a pillow <laughs> if you're feeling really angry. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. Attend, connect, and express that. Not to go, oh, I can't have that feeling today. I can't. That's not, you know, that's a bad feeling. It's just a feeling, you know. It's just an emotion. That's yeah. Right. Yeah, fantastic. Great, great point. <laughs> to let it out somehow, express it. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Oh. It makes, as you said, your vibration becomes lighter and you can just yeah. be, in, be in company with it as well. Yes, totally, totally. Yeah. Yes. Well, I guess we're, we're we're getting nearly to an hour. Gosh, we've talked a lot. <laughs> wow. I mean, my, mind you, I could talk way more. <laughs> Don't know if anyone would want to listen because <laughs> I could go on for hours. We've had but a nice, on this topic, we've had a nice chat. <laughs> it's lovely. It's been beautiful. Beautiful. I, I I'm still like, looking at exploring the idea of uh, doing a retreat with you too. So if Anyone's interested, let us know. I'd love to do that with Absolutely. you. Somewhere Absolutely. Somewhere in Australia, somewhere fun. <laughs> uh, you're in Cairns, I'm in Melbourne. There'll be somewhere in the middle or somewhere <laughs> around. That would be great. And um, so, and and also people can can um, do your work with you online, can't they, as well? You've got a wonderful... Yes, I'm, I'm just branching into that. I have a little centre, a little little clinic centre here in Cairns and I'm also just moving into that online space with webinars and freebies and all of that. So that's lots of fun, reaching out. That's fantastic. Beautiful people. Yes. And you also, as well as your, as your radiant self, you know, all your um, incredible um, hypnotherapy that you've done and your uh, master's in um, counselling and everything, you, you, you're so highly qualified as well as your inherent, <laughs> you know, wisdom. So... <laughs> Well done, you. Thank you. It's mutually shared. <laughs> Thanks. Before um, we go, I, yep. Before we go, do you have any beautiful self-love meditations or affirmations you'd like to share? Sure, I'd love to. Um, so it, it won't be a long one, but it's it's a good one to be able to work with to um, have more clarity in the self-love arena. So um, what I get people to do is to start by just taking a few deep breaths, centering the energy, becoming mindful of the breath. Big deep breaths in and out. And then I'll get you to, I like to get people to um, put an ultraviolet purple flame around their body and aura. The ultraviolet purple flame does many, many things at this time on the planet. It transmutes any lower vibrational energies, negativity, fear, worries. It aligns us in a perfect balance of the two genders because the divine feminine is pink, the divine masculine is blue. That comes together in the divine violet, which is mm -hmm. the perfect blend of the two. And that's also another aspect of self-love we do in the classes, which is divine masculine feminine balance within. So centering yourself in that flame of ultraviolet purple, it also does a lot of other things as well, aligns us with the beautiful highest vibrational divine unconditional love energies. And it transmutes the planet as well. You might even want to visualise it around the planet regularly. It would be a wonderful thing to do. You'd be really serving humanity by doing that. Breathing in that ultraviolet purple colour. Feeling the energy. And then going to 300 feet above and bringing down the pure sparkling white light down through the top of the head or through the crown chakra, filling up each cell of your body with that beautiful sparkling white light and going to the core of the earth as well and connecting to Mother Earth with your light, so you're connecting from above and below, breathing it in, and while you're centered in that beautiful energy, I want you to just go within and ask yourself these questions. And often it's our first intuitive response that has a really 
helpful, beneficial answer for us. So when I go inside within, deep into the inner recesses of my being, I ask myself, who am I? What am I? Who am I? How do I feel about myself? How do other people see me and how do I see myself? What qualities do I have? Everyone has their own unique skills and qualities that absolutely no one else in the world can replicate in the same way that you have them. So what are your qualities? What do you bring to the mix? What is important to me? What fires my spirit? What am I passionate about? What gifts do I have? What am I here to share with the world? while remembering at the same time that just being here is enough. You are enough just being here. You don't have to do anything or be anyone. Just your presence, your existence is enough within itself. How can I expand the love I feel for myself? What would I need to do to be able to feel greater levels of love for myself. Is there something my inner voice would like to communicate to me today? Is there something I've been shutting out or something I need to hear, to listen to, that my inner voice is trying to tell me? Sometimes you can also think of this as your higher self trying to communicate to you. And just to finish, if I truly felt the divine before me now, if God or the source or the light or whatever way you picture this higher energy beyond yourself, if you are able to invite it to stand in front of you now, what would it share with you? What would it say to you now? And then I ask you to just visualize some grounding roots from your feet going to the earth to ground your energy maybe put a grounding cord in as well from your base chakra in around the center of the earth just to really ground your energy so you're fully earth breathing back into the body with your breath expanding yourself back into the body and if you received any interesting or important insights just write them down now before you forget them <laughs> they can benefit you And when you're ready, you can open your eyes. So I want to say thank you to everyone out there that, that, that was listening or has listened to this and have stood the whole way through to get to the yes. end here. Thank you so much. <laughs> really appreciate your time and your energy and um, lots of love to you all. And Tosca, you're doing an amazing job. So I really want to honour you for everything that you're doing. You bring such a beautiful, joyful, bubbling presence and radiance into the world. And um, I really want to honour you for that. 
and right back at you, sister. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. This has just been a golden conversation and it has just been totally delightful, uplifting, high-vibing conversation <laughs> with you. And I'm back with you. Thank you so much. A um, mountain of gratitude to you and all these beautiful watchers and people who might watch later to say yes. thank you and I uh, honour your light and namaste. <laughs> oh, beautiful. And I just want to mention too, if, if people would like to work with me, please contact me on my website and I have all sorts beautiful. of things that I offer, including a three-month Awakening Your Divine Potential program, which is incredibly oh. powerful. So, um, yeah, Golden. I'd love to hear from anyone and have a be you till full day. <laughs> <laughs> Beautiful day. <laughs> Thank you Bye. so much, Medina. Thank, Thank you, you all for watching. Have a Thank good you, day. everyone. Bye. Bye. Bye.